Next topic. I think we had now a lot of food during the last couple of hours. We had a lunch. I think now it's time for something liquid. <laughs> we don't, uh, we want, don't want to try out. And uh, I'm not going to say too much, but the next people who will join us right now here, how should I say, are going to perfect even the flavor where we chefs, where bartenders believe it is perfect already. So, and for this reason, I would like to welcome Hector from Ron Methusalem as head of customer experience, Mario as founder of bar, bar and wine bar Angelita here in Madrid, and Maximo as head bartender. So, handing over carefully the stage to you, treat it well, but I know you do your best anyway. Thank you very much to be here with us. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here. Welcome to the world of Matusalem Rom. Today we're gonna show you what does science help, how does science help us to do a perfect combination between solid and liquids. I've been I have the pleasure of working with some of the best brands in the world, like Louis Vuitton, Jimmy Choo, Mercedes-Benz, Mauro Colagreco, and of course, Matusalem Rome. All of these have shaped my vision on what is a perfect match. This perfect match has been following me for years on kind of a lifestyle. But working five years with Mauro Colagreco as a liquid chef helped me to understand what we're presenting today and how the science uh, has helped to us. So in these five years, you can imagine, working with the best of the best of the best, I need to pair all my liquids with his food. So when I say liquids, it's not only cocktails are also spirits, waters, soft drinks, and wines. But maybe many of you, 99% of you guys are thinking, why a Rome brand is on the stage? Why a Mexican guy is talking in English on a Spanish audience? Well, we're not just a, a, a brand of Rome, we are the, the top brand of Rome. We have 150 years this year. We are called the first luxury, luxury Rome in the history because we are the guys that brought Solera System to Cuba. Solera System is a dynamic aging process that we do blend of liquids and blend of cask. We are one of the Roms that has less sugar per grams per liter, so we're called a healthy rum, and we are a gastro rum. What does that mean? Gastro rum, we are one of the few spirits, all the range of spirits, rum, tequila, whiskey, gin, mezcal, etc., etc., that has a food laboratory pairing analysis, super extend. But to arrive onto the science moment, we need to go back to our inspirations. So once we have the inspiration that all of the chef here or media or end consumer is looking, is to get inspired to create something. So we work the same, we get inspired, we create something, and then we arrive to the science to valid all our inspirations. So can you please play the video? This day began nearly 150 years ago, the day in which a few crazy people decided to create something unique, something unrepeatable that would stand the test of time. From where the idea came, only they know. What we do know is that the inspiration came to them in Cuba, in a warm place steeped in aromas, a place of unrepeatable shape of the type that no longer exists. It was a moment of inspiration. 
But what is inspiration? Inspiration is sometimes just that, a moment and a place, a shape, a memory or a daydream, a word, a piece of music, a rhythm, a person. But the important thing is not where it comes from. The truly important thing about inspiration is what it produces. Because that magical moment is capable of creating music, unforgettable verses, colors that make your soul tremble, unfathomable shapes, irrepressible rhythms, heartrending speeches. Feel, observe, learn, taste, discover, create, enjoy. Every time I see this video, I get crazy goosebumps. Um, it drives me to try to get more creativity things, and I'm very grateful to be with such a legendary brand. So now we're going to go to the science part of how the science helps us to do a perfect match between liquids and solids. Can you play the presentation, please? So, we what is food pairing? So, we go to a laboratory and we put one of our liquids in the laboratory. And that laboratory starts to work with HTLC, which is high performance liquid chronomatography, and gas chronomatography. So they start to separate all the molecules of the liquid, and they start to match it, depends on the, the diversity of the molecules, and start to compare with 10,000 different edible products until they arrive to a perfect match. These are the, the score that they start to, to work with all the edible products that we're having. So once we have at the left one of the products and to the right our product, they start to create a match. And this match start to work from 50% to 100%. Our aim in our philosophy is to take only the ingredients that has more than 70% up to 100%. And these matches, we have an intense laboratory study that we share it to top mixologists in the world, like the guys are with me now, a super top chef, and end consumers. The end consumers to give them the, the idea of the creativity push to them. We're sharing these laboratory analysis to 65 different countries around the world. When we have our perfect match, we are going to every single product in the kitchen by divisions or by columns or by levels. So for example, 23 match very well with uh, crab meat. So imagine 81% of crab meat, perfect match. So we stop talking about what is the tasting notes of liquid. And in the world of rum, every brand of rum is talking about it's dark, it's chocolate, it's leather, it's vanilla, and it's coconut. Us, we want to step to the next level. And we're giving you the possibilities on doing a perfect match in the table for your customers, valid with a laboratory analysis. So then we have done pairings with crab. Uh, of course, 92% percent, uh, percentage of banana. We are, everywhere we go, we're, we're playing a lot with local. So local ingredients, what we are showing today, 
we are in Spain, so we are playing with local ingredients that is going to be valid with this laboratory analysis. Crazy things that are happening, for example, with rum, a perfect match is lemongrass with 86%. We have, uh, we have uh, Lefer Royal, which is a kind of a, a exclusive beer. We have Chabata. We have baked gamba. We have raspberry. So it's an infinite chain. Once we have the liquid with the solid, we start to pair and pair and pair. So today we're going to do a sequence of three pairings, a starter, a main, and a dessert. All of them is what we do in 65 different countries. We share our laboratory analysis to the creativity team. This creativity uh, team is from Angelita, which is a gastro bar here in Madrid. And Mario is the founder of Angelita, which is a guy that has shaped the modern times of mixology in Madrid and in Spain, with 25 years of background. And Massimo, which is a global bartender from Italy, that is the head bartender of Angelita. Welcome, okay. guys. Thank you so much, Hector. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sorry for my English. I try to explain in that language because it's better for me to learn English every time. <laughs> and at first, uh, thank you to Matusalen, of course, because this is a great opportunity. Uh, it's a congress with sure the best chefs in the world. And for me, for my team, Max here, here it's a great honor to be part of the gastronomy with uh, our work with mixology. Uh, Angelita is a family concept that, in, that is so important because if you go to Angelita here in Madrid, there are two floors, and in the first floor, you can see a wine bar style of bistro in Spanish style because in, in, in Spain, the people look the wine with uh, food in a table, and you can order uh, with more than 100 of wines by the glass, and you can order wines by half a glass. And the key on the concept is you arrive to Angelita and discover some wines maybe you don't know with the help of the team of Angelita. Then, uh, downstairs, we are uh, in the cocktail bar. And in Angelita, there are another part. It's not uh, a part you can see if you visit Angelita, but it's so important for me because it's a family concept, not only with my brother, also with our parents. Because we have a group in a little, little, little region uh, its name is Zamora, close to Galicia and Portugal. It's uh, northwest of Spain with very hard climb. And we are making in the new, the new menu this year, all the menu was uh, made only with local ingredients. And 90% of the times, those ingredients arrive for our group. Sometimes we take ingredients for local farmers, local producers, always around the uh, group, and at last we take some ingredients, wild ingredients, always the same around the group. And this is the concept of, of Angelita. And uh, for me, maybe for many people, it's a sustainability concept, uh, and that's good because we are working in that. But for me, it's important because it's an identity concept. I remember when I stayed in restaurants around the world, I visit a restaurant in Japan or in Brazil or in Mexico, great cuisine, and I'm looking for the typical products of the region. And the people in the restaurants around the world explain with the solid languages about his history, his products, all of his country. But you can arrive to the bars around the world, and you can order a Negroni, a Manjaran, and classic cocktail. That is great. But don't speak about this country. For me, it's important if you arrive to Angelita, we will speak about our family, our group, our products, with our liquid language. Uh, a part of that, the Congress is a question of science and food. And in Angelita, we're thinking in science in food. In fact, it's crazy because we are learning about techniques of food, but its application is in liquid part. And they will make a three food pairings. We are bartenders uh, with a liquid food pairings uh, with uh, the produce of Matusalem. And the science of that is to make uh, cocktails not like a regular bar, because if you look at a regular bar, it's the same 
art of preparation for a 100 of years maybe or more. But in Angelita, you can see jiggers. You can see mixing glasses. You can see shakers. You can see nothing of that. In fact, why is the technique of Angelita for making cocktails? OK, I speak about a recipe of a simple, simple cocktail, like a Negroni, for example. It's a same part of gin, vermouth, and bitter. OK, in Angelita, we don't make the recipe like that, because in Angelita, the recipe of a Negroni with thinking in a people in the kitchens is a 30 grains, not volume, is better way, it's more precision. 30 grains of gin, 30 grains of vermouth, 30 grains of bitter, 23 grains of water. The dilution in every cocktail in Angelita was medium, and sometimes we introduced flavors into the dilution uh, for making more complexity in the cocktail, and at last, minus five degrees of temperature. And this is important because we are thinking in control rate of the factors of the cocktail. Okay? And for me, that is, in general, the concept of Angelita. We are making uh, three food paintings with uh, two uh, options. First, we try to take the flavors who the labs in Belgium propose, but in Angelita, only make cocktails with local products. And we will make the flavors of the lab with the products of our group. And this is the work for today for Max. <laughs> so, okay. so the first pairing that we're going to do is with 15, which 15 is our first liquid that we have created. This one is the flagship. This is the old king that we have, 150 years this year. And it's a rum, sugarcane juice, um, Solera system, 15 years, and it has only 5% grams of sugar per liter. So when we talk about rums with this age, they start on 30 grams per liter. So the world is changing. The industry of mixology, we're looking on giving you more healthy uh, liquid and to produce more healthy lifestyle among us. Yep. So we have gave the laboratory analysis about 15, mm -hmm. and Max is taking all the local ingredients to do a very easy food pairing. Right, here we go. So again, thank you very much for having us here. Uh, it's a real pleasure. Uh, I'm going to say two things before we start. So one, I'm going to make you thirsty, and I'm going to make you hungry. So sorry about that. Don't take it personal. And second thing is um, my English is not my first language. It's not my second either. So if I start to get overexcited and speak a lot fast, uh, please throw things at me or shout at me, so I'll, uh, I'll move it down. So anyway, so as uh, Hector said and Mario said, so we have uh, a different philosophy at Angelita. We don't work as all the other bars work. For example, you cannot see any cocktail shaker, you're not seeing any eyes. Every cocktail has got its own dilution already, and uh, we just earn about service. So prep is for prep, and service is for service. Anyway, so what we did for the Matusalem 15 year is, um, a, is a pairing that we based ourselves through the food pairing uh, uh, platform. But it's something unusual in our industry because it's really empirical. So you normally like, try things, you get your virtual palette, as we, call, we always call it, and then you, know, you make your pairing through your knowledge. But today we decided to pair our, our gastronomical rama, that's how we call it, because it's really it's amazing how, you get, how versatile it is and uh, how agile makes everything through the uh, fruit, uh, fruit painting uh, platform. So what we did here is basically take the, uh, the most common uh, aromatic compounds that you get in Moto 2015, because there are like 600 of them, so we just took three. In this case, it's lactones, anthocyanins, and dalmatons. So anthocyanins, so we're speaking about fruity, fruitiness. So in this case, for example, we have some berries here that I'm going to talk about, about after before. Uh, so the lactones, obviously they come from the barrel, which is an American oak, so they always get this whiskey lactones, so we're gonna give you some vanilla, some sweetness, which we're gonna pair with the wines as well. And then we got these uh, anthocyanins, uh, they, we get uh, again petals, floral, uh, floral essence, and, uh, and a bit of fruitiness. So when we started, obviously the start of the show and the main ingredient is uh, Matusalem 15, but in this case, what we got here is a, a, is a technique that we've done, so basically, we saw the pairing, and the first pairing that comes to mind is obviously uh, oxidized wines. 
oxidized wines, fortified wines. So what we did here, we didn't want to use, um, in that case it was Madeira, it's just so from the first, first screenshot. Uh, what we did was take a blend of Garnacha and Tempranillo, which is already full of those lactones and those other two molecules that we spoke about, so fluidiness and a bit of flowers. And what we did is the classic s technique. So we took them to at a high temperature, so we, always, we also get those jammy aromas. But then again, after this, we need to get this like oxidated taste. So what we did is, obviously not in this dimension, we did it with four liters of wine, uh, but we just take an oxygen bomb and we just put it in the wine, which has been fortified already with our beautiful Methuselah. Why we do this? Because we don't want uh, acidic acid or lactic acid bacteria to thrive in this uh, kind of environment. So we bring the alcohol up to 18.5%, and uh, then we pair it with lacto-fermented blackberries. So we take the blackberries that they come from our own garden, so we put them with 2% salt, non-iodized salt, so we don't want to kill any of the good bacteria that we want. We put it under vacuum, we let it ferment for four days, and then we make a nice tincture out of that, which is going to give this umami, savoriness, and this fruitiness. Then we also add a little bit of the, um, of the cayenne uh, peppers, because um, we didn't speak about this molecule before the sensation uh, better, so it's the capsaicin. So capsaicin brings everything up. So it's the case of we are pairing uh, the same molecule for the same, uh, same kind of ingredients, but we're getting something more, and we're going to like something more. So same thing that we always say, that one plus one is not always two, can be three, can be four, depends how many, how many molecules you combine. Then we follow up with our green cardamom and a bit of white peppercorn cordial that we rectify with a bit of tartaric acid just to follow this uh, wine, uh, wine um, taste that we have, uh, wine uh, qualities that we have. And then we finish it off with a bit of dilution, because as I said before, we don't stir our drink, we don't shake our drinks, it's already diluted. We are gonna dilute it with a bit of dill water. Dill water is gonna give you this anethol, which is not inside the, the Matusalem rum, but it's gonna give us some freshness, some good sparkling notes. So here we have our cotta, which has already been weighted, so it's 120 grams, so as we say, we work by gram. And we are gonna pair it today with a nice food pairing, which is, it's really typical in Spain. I mean, when I think about Spain being an expat, so I'm not from here, I always think about nice chacinas, so meat platter or charcuterie dish, and a bit of, you know, uh, mixed tapas. So in this case, we took uh, a French-style uh, jamón, but in this case, come from the French border with the, the Basque country. The, uh, the kind of uh, pork that they use is a southwestern pork, and it's been, uh, it's, it's been given the salinity from the from the natural soil from the south of France. So they massage it, they get the moisturized, and then they cure it not as much as the jamón serrano, so not as much as umami, but we get some sweetness and some really good fatty acids which are gonna work with the cocktail. Then secondly, our chorizo, amazing to me, as to us, I think it's the best, <laughs> the best kind of charcuterie there is. Really savory, you got this, uh, this pimenton de la vera, oma de picante, so smoking off paprika, it's amazing. And then we finish it up with something more familiar to me, which is botarga. So here we have mallet uh, row, uh, row eggs, which basically, uh, fish eggs, sorry, uh, which they've been cured, but not too much. So they're still fatty, they still go well with the cocktails, and those fatty acids are gonna bring up our cocktail, and also are gonna lower, lower down the ABV, uh, perception-wise, because, you know, the, the fats, they, they work as inhibitors. And so they're gonna make our, our really small molecules a bit bigger. Then we pair it with a beautiful chapata bread, as you said before, and uh, this is a classic chapata baguette, so uh, this is a sourdough bread, and we have, in this case, a bit of Arbequina olive oil on top. That's gonna bring everything together. And the wine glasses is a, kind of like a, a common language that we have with it upstairs, so wine, wine glasses, but in this case, it's been studied scientifically since it's a, a, a tasting glass. And uh, they make it, for, uh, the guys from Zweisel, they make it for us. You can see our logo here if you, I don't know if it's visible for you, but you got the camera anyway. And uh, that's what that will be our first pairing, uh, a, re a real taste of Spanish lifestyle. So everything looks like very complicated, but once we give the analysis to them, we push them on creativity side. So what, they are, what we want that they avoid is to lose time, because time is money. So then, once they have the perfect guideline, they are discovering what in the palate the consumer will experience which is uh, the perfect marriage between liquid and solid. 
everyone, many of these in this uh, theater is thinking, oh, I'm a little bit afraid to have a dinner or a lunch with the spirit pairing, especially when the spirit has 40% ABV. But once we talk about when a molecule match perfect with the other molecule, the experience is spectacular. You see local ingredients, we're not complicating our life, but when you sip, eat, sip, eat, the experience is magic. So we go to the second pairing. So our second pairing for today is going to be this beautiful Matusa Element Solito. Yes, so <laughs> we launched this in 2019, and we did, we did it as a limited edition. But then Corona came, and all our tour and guideline through, through the market was a little bit stopped. Then reopen again, and we have this vision on creating more limited editions by numbers. So this is the first luxury rosé rum in the world. And it's um, a blend, a solera, solera system for 18 months. We filter in charcoal, then we mix a little bit with 15, and we rest it in Tempranillo cask, which is a Spanish cask. That's why we have this beautiful rosé color, which is orangey or oxidized. It's 40% ABV. We have won the best design in 2020 bottle in the world, and it's only five grams of sugar per liter. Per liter. Yes, in fact. We think with uh, Maximo uh, about uh, what is the perfect match for this food pairing. And in fact, in my mind, Matusalin Solito is a cocktail ready yet with all the flavors of the complexity. And it's a rum with wine heart. And in Angelita, 50% of our work is around the wine. And we are thinking to make a food pairing, introducing in Solito Matusalin like a wine with a food pairing with the wine hurt also uh, in food. Max? So here in this case, we just, uh, as Mario was saying before, it's a cocktail by its own, so we don't really need to mix it. It's uh, an amazing uh, kind of rum. It's the first rosé rum in the market. It's more Spanish than me than since it's been here in three, three, four, three years in a Spanish cask. I've never been three years in a Spanish cask, so it's more Spanish than me. And uh, what we did there is just get a really, really nice glass, which is an emblem Spiegelow glass, just so we can really smell it and get all those beautiful, beautiful aromas with them. And then we pair it again with some kind of fat and fatty acids, which is a steak tartare, which we do mostly traditional way, but then we do like a real, real small tweak. So we reduce uh, the, the, some uh, oxidized wine that, we, that, you, that I was talking about before. So we do a demi glass with that, with a bit of fresh berries, just to upbring the acidity, the tartaric acid that I was talking about before, and to make it more lovely. What we got on top, those, those uh, five dots, you got um, uh, a, a sriracha mayo, so basically we get the chilies, we like to ferment them in, uh, in a brine, then we blend them with the mayo, and then we make a really nice sauce with them. And then we got a, 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 a mustard and honey sauce that is gonna cut through with a bit of spiciness, and it's gonna make it everything brighter. So here you have it, another Spanish lifestyle taste. So we're doing a food pairing of antioxidant. So this antioxidant is to reduce or to become younger. So we're doing an aftertaste of the, all the wine notes that we're having in, in Solito. And for the third and last pairing, we're doing 23, which 23 today is the oldest spirit that we have, the oldest liquid that we have. Next month, we're launching the 150 year commemorative uh, SKU, which is going to be a blend of almost 30 years and above. So here we're blending something that the more age in a cask is a liquid, the more sugar it gets. The magic of the Solera system in Matusalem is that in mouth, tastes a little bit sweet. When we pass it, it's dry, but then also it's very smoky, which on rum 
world, it's not really common to have so much smokiness. So here, we're going to do an infusion with the glasses. Yes, in fact, he, the perfect match for uh, Angelita with that kin of rums is, uh, at first, the toasted cereal flavors. And in Angelita, we are working from nose to tail philosophy with uh, the soup products of the kitchen. I remember, for example, making cocktail with the solids of mandarin, when some products like that. And every day uh, in Angelita, we take the uh, bread of the day before for making a homemade liquor with that bread. Uh, Max will explain of that. And then the second part of the match of the cocktail in that uh, case is white uh, or milk chocolate, milk chocolate. And we, uh, in our group, we don't have cocoa for making that, but we are finding some products who smell and the flavor is like that with, uh, yes, with gambots, uh, is, you can explain? Here we yeah. are. So basically our cocktail is, um, is a dessert cocktail, as we like to call it, but not because of the residual sugar or the, really the alcohol content, but more for the aroma profile. So here we're looking at a flash infusion that we do with the back pot. So what we decided to do with our beautiful Matusalem 23 is to highlight this fruitiness, those uh, ripe banana, uh, kind of notes, uh, mango. But in this case, again, local produce. So. To bring the, the fruitiness up, we use some uh, platano canario, which we both, we use the skin for another process that we get the, the essential oil through a sucrose infusion. But with the, with the solids, whenever they over mature, we dehydrate them and then we use them for this kind of preparation. So whenever we, we want to use them as a, um, as a thing to be sold in, so to get the aromas out. So here, basically, we have a cocktail, which is which already put inside with the dry ice. I'm going to explain you in a bit how it works. So we have this amazing cocktail that we do with a, a bread liquor. So as Mario was saying before, we try to do everything full circle. So we don't want to waste anything that comes into the bar or in the restaurant. That's really important to us since it's not just about the, obviously the planet's sustainability, but it's really logical to the bar economy as well. Because if you can give like four kind of, four lives to an ingredient, it's always better than one. So we get our chapata bread, which is already stale. So they get it, the guys, they get it in the morning. They don't use it, uh, obviously, because you always tend to buy more so you don't get short on bread. We then get it the day after. We roast it really slowly for some Maillard reaction and get this caramel notes that you always, you obviously you got in Mat uh, Matula 723. And we basically infuse it in high proof ethanol. So we don't get, um, so we get all the aromas out, but with not much time. So we don't need to wait a lot, of it, a lot for it. Then, after that, as Mario was saying, we got we obviously the yeasty, yeasty part from that. And then we also got some, um, some milk chocolate notes with the carob. Carob is a really common ingredient in Spain. It's not really used. For example, we use the skins to make this beautiful liqueur that, that you just see there. And uh, we use the seeds. We're trying to make something like a coffee out of it. So we're trying to roast the seeds. But anyway, it's another cotta. You can come to Angelita. Maybe in a month you can try it. And then the dilution is going to be a magnolia water. So in this case, we take, a, um, we take magnolia flowers, we infuse them in, uh, in a grape spirit, so it's kind of like mellow, easy. So we have a bit of honey, which is already inside the characteristic of Matusalem. And then we bring the ABV back to 11, just to uh, don't get too much ABV out of this cocktail. So as you can see, this is a flash infusion. So basically, I just put the whole cocktail in here. I just put some dry ice. Dry ice is CO2 at minus 78.5 degrees. Not saying that because I'm unsmart, but I'm saying that because we, we need to understand how it works. We are not working with temperature here. We don't, we don't aim to make our, our drink really cold because it's not going to happen. So if we start for, with a drink with 25, uh, uh, 25 uh, Celsius, you end up with a drink at 7 Celsius. So it's not, it's not servable. But we use the dry ice just because we want that pressure. So we want that pressure to bring the liquid up in the chamber. So we put the liquid in the bottom chamber with the dry ice. And in the upper part, as I was saying before, we got the, the platano canario, a bit of uh, raspberries just for, to uh, bring this, uh, this fruitiness. And then we also got a little bit of lemongrass, as you were saying before, because we get those lemonine and citral notes that we were looking for just to uh, bring 
a bit of the uh, liveliness in this cocktail. Then we serve it in this amazing glass, which is something that's gonna... That's the new, that's the new that's today. The, that's the new thing, <laughs> that's the new thing. It's the future for us. So we decided, and Mario probably is gonna talk about it after, but we decided that for the future, we wanna reduce at the minimum the, the, uh, the quantity of ice we use. Especially now in Spain, I don't know if you guys know it, but we have a lot of shortage on ice and on water, obviously, because you know, the, all the heat and the wildfire that we have in. So we consciously try to reduce the ice through using this kind of glass, which has already got a freezing, uh, freezing gel inside. So this gets to minus 25. Now it's liquid because it's been out a bit but it, it keeps for a long time. For example, we tried uh, a little bit of an experiment with the, with the dry martini. So we put it at minus nine degrees and it stayed like that for half an hour. I mean, in half an hour I can drink four dry martinis, but that's the, that's the kind of time that, the, that, that it stays like that. So you, do, you, don't have, you have a longer shelf, uh, shelf life of the cocktail. And we pair it with amazing cheeses that Mario is gonna explain to us. Yeah, this is um, a concept of uh, Creamy cheeses, in mm -hmm. fact, the first uh, cheeses, maybe one of the best cheeses in the world and most famous, Gruyere. Mm -hmm. And so the second one is from mm -hmm. Edinburgh. It's a blue cheese with the same milk, it's white milk, and mm -hmm. so creamy. Mm -hmm. And then we use the pumpkin hornet, mm -hmm. forget the uh, sweetness flower in the uh, cheese table compared to the Matusalem mm. uh, cocktail. Absolutely, and then again, fats goes well with the cocktail, especially with this kind of cocktail, which is 18% ABV. So Speaking about a higher ABV cocktail than what we used to at Angelita, not in any bars. I mean, a whiskey is our 16%, so we're not that far from that. And um, yeah, so we use them as a vehicle to make those really small molecules a bit bigger. So it stays in your mouth a lot more, and then impacts your beer less whenever it gets to your mouth. So that will be it for me. So <laughs> we don't have more time, unfortunately, and we would love that all of you taste it. We're going to be here on backstage if everyone wants to, to get the food pairing analysis or to do a little tasting with us or to get to know a little bit more what is Matusalem. Thank you very much, Angelita, for being part of this little trip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much for this beautiful presentation. It's always beautiful to see, you know, how how trained, especially bartenders, are how they are performing in front of people, you know, if they have the right <laughs> audience. Be yes. staring the ears. <laughs> I experienced yesterday already during a beautiful lunch uh, some cocktails of uh, Ron Methusalem, um, pairing cocktails, very good. I only can recommend, in this case, obviously, there's a very good place here in Madrid. If you have the time during the night, I think the guys are there and the right drinks as well. So. Thank you very much to be with us. It was a pleasure to listen to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.